Hi guys, welcome to your Understanding 2 lesson for Telling Time. Today in this video lesson we're going to look at how to tell time to 5 minute intervals. So as a quick recap, last lesson we looked at how when the minute hand starts at the zero and it has gone all the way around for 60 minutes, that has been one hour and that is then when our our hand starts to be able to move around the circle. So it takes 60 minutes, a whole lap of our minutes hand before our hour hand can move. Okay, so in this lesson we're going to look at what we need to know to be able to read the time. Now you should know already the difference between the hour hand and the minute hand. Whenever our minute hand's pointing to the top, we know that it is an o'clock time. Whenever it's pointing up towards the 12, it's o'clock. So, for example, the time on the clock now would be 9 o'clock. We also know that when the minute hand is pointing down towards the 6, it has gone halfway around the clock. So, it is half past the hour. So in this example, the time shows half past nine o'clock. But what if our minute hand is at a stage where it's not pointing at the 12 and it's not pointing at the six, it's not an o'clock time or a half past time. It might be on one of these numbers in between. We need to be able to read the clock at all times throughout the day and through all times as it's rotating around. So, for example, if I had this um, time on my clock here, the hour hand pointing to the nine and the minute hand pointing to the four, I need to be able to know how to read that. The easiest way to um, remember to read the time is to start with the hour hand first and then to look at the minute hand. So if I look at my hour hand first, I can see, because it's the shorter, more thicker hand, it is pointing to the 9. So I write the hour first, 9. Then, on digital time, we would see two dots in the middle, and that's just there to represent breaking up the hour and the minute. Now, after the dots, I would need to write the minutes. If I look at my minutes hand here, you can see it's pointing to the four. Now some people might think you would write that time then as nine four. But that's not really how our minutes work because we have 60 minutes in a whole hour. So we wouldn't write nine four because our minute hand isn't actually pointing at this four. It's pointing the whole way through to these little minutes behind it. But sometimes they're not always on our clocks. So we have to know where each of those 60 minutes actually falls on our clock. So rather than 9-4, we would write the hour first, which is still pointing to the 9. And then for the minute hand, we have to see what minute it is pointing through to. Not the hour number, the minute number behind it. And you can see there, it is pointing all the way through to 20. So the hour would be 9, and the minute would be 20. This time on our clock is showing 9.20. Let's have a look at a couple more examples. Okay, so here on this clock, we can see uh, the time is 9.20 again. And sometimes it can get a little bit confusing for people that they forget what numbers they're looking at and whether they're working with the hours or with the minutes. So what we need to remember, first of all, is that the hour hand, this short one, points to the numbers, and that's the hours, because our short hand's working with the hours. The minute hand points through the numbers to the outside of the clock because it is focusing on all these little minutes around the edges. So how we can remember what number means what minute 
is by practicing the trick of counting up in fives. Because for each number that we go around in the clock, five minutes go past. You might be able to even count it with me here nice and small. You can see there's one minute, two minutes, three minutes there. See how each little line means the next minute, four minutes, five minutes. So that first bigger line there is five minutes. So I'm going to write it in there so I don't forget. And if we count around even further, we can see six, seven, eight, nine. The next line where the two is, is actually ten minutes. Let's keep going. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We've got to the three and it is fifteen minutes. 16, 17, 18, 19, the 4 is 20 minutes, keep counting, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 minutes at the 5. Alright, from here I want you to keep counting around by yourself and I'm going to fast forward a little bit and finish the other numbers on the clock. So there we go, I've continued to count around in fives, our six is 30 minutes and then we keep going around 35 minutes, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60 because when we get back up to the 12 we have done a whole lap of the minutes and it has been 60 minutes. Okay. So here I have an example of a new clock. Now this time our hands aren't in two different colours to help us. But if we look closely at the hands, we can figure out which one they are. The hour hand is a bit shorter and thicker and points towards the numbers. And the minute hand is a little bit longer and a little bit skinnier and points through the numbers. See how it's pointing through that two to the minutes at the back there. So just like before, when we write the time, we're going to have an hour first, then two dots to separate it, and then the minutes afterwards. So, let's look at the hour hand first. It's pointing pretty closely to the eight. It's almost a little bit after it, but it would be eight for the hours. And now we need to look at the minutes. Now remember, we're not looking at these big hour um, numbers. We're trying to figure out the minute, all the little dashes, the minutes on the outer side. Now, instead of it being 8, 2, we count up in the minutes. So you could count around with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Our minute hand has gone 10 minutes around and it's at the 2 and from the activity we just did before we know that the 2 is 10 so the time on this clock is 8, 10. Alright, let's take a look at this second example. Just like before, we need to figure out what our hour is first and then what our minutes are. So we're going to find our hour hand, there it is, the shorter, more thicker one, and have a look. It's pointing towards up here, in between the 11 and 12, so it's not at the 12 just yet, so it's 11 for the hour. And now we need to figure out the minutes. So our minute hand is pointing down here towards the 5, so we don't say it's 5 minutes, we know that there's lots of little minutes around there we need to figure out where that would be for the five. So instead of counting around every single minute, we could do it that way, or we could use our strategy of counting around in fives. So starting at the 12, we've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25. The five on our clock represents 25 minutes. So this time would be 11, 25. Okay, so don't forget that when we are working with reading the time to five minute intervals, we have our hour numbers in the middle here, the main numbers 1 to 12, 
represent the hours and each of those numbers also represent a certain minute amount. The one represents five minutes and the two represents ten minutes and so on. Try to remember this and it will make reading time a lot easier. Great job today guys, well done.